sign to triangulate the Republicans and steal that thunder. It was Clinton who signed the crime bill with mandatory sentences that promoted the escalation of the prison industrial complex. And yet the same black folk, same progressive slash liberals still supporting him as he plays his saxophone. <laughs> Put it down, we got John Coltrane, brother. <laughs> we need some progressive policy here. So the age of Reagan cuts across Democrats and Republicans. That began with Carter deregulating in the 70s. So one hoped that Barack Obama would serve as a counterweight. And in the Democratic rhetoric during the campaign, it looked as if he would. He invoked Martin King over and over and over again. And he said, don't deodorize Martin. He didn't use the word colorblind. He wanted us to be love struck. He died fighting for sanitation workers. He died because he loved Vietnamese babies. He was against the US occupation in Vietnam. That's Martin. When he died, 72% of Americans against him. 55% of black people against him. He stood alone, Socratic, prophetic. But he was mobilized during the campaign. So wait a minute. How are you going to build on this legacy? And the rhetoric was, in fact, quite reassuring to many of us. But as soon as he won, in those cathartic moments, many of us, if not all of us, will never forget it. He brought in those connected to the Wall Street oligarchs, the Tim Geithners, and some of others. He brought in those tied to the old foreign policies, the Middle East, Asia, Latin America, the old Washington consensus, the neoliberal preoccupation with interests as we ally ourselves with thugs and gangsters like Mubarak and others. The hope began to fade. And at this point, William Daly, at this point, not mentioning poverty one time in the State of the Union, the first time a president didn't mention poverty since 1948, obsessed with the next election rather than the next generation in any serious way, allowing the conservatives to define the terrain so it's all about budget deficits rather than trying to generate conditions under which jobs can be available to persons who are wrestling with levels of unemployment and underemployment, working people dealing with foreclosing of homes and education being decrepit and you get crumbs of four billion with a race to the top as this education is a race and not a right. And the vicious attacks on the teachers' unions, but Finland is number one in education in the world, and 90% of their teachers are unionized, so that maybe something else is going on. <laughs> but when you hope for poverty in America, for well-to-do children, well-to-do children in America are number one in science and math, just like Finland, because they have similar conditions high quality schools, small classrooms, teachers who care, parents are involved, and they are told every week you are brilliant, whether it's true or not. <laughs> self-confidence, self-respect. When you introduce poverty, that's when America begins to slide down the list. And no serious talk about poverty escalating now in the last two and a half years under my dear brother Barack Obama. I'm not even talking about the 110 drones dropped in Pakistan this last year. Bush had 45 drones dropped in eight years. Obama had 53 the first year. Trying to kill terrorists, okay, but not their children, not their grandchildren. What distinguishes a democratic regime is that you have rule of law, not collective punishment. That even the terrorist grandchild has sex, sanctity, and dignity. We don't have a right to kill a terrorist grandchild. Just like Emmett Till did not have the right to say, we're going to drop a bomb on the white folk in the neighborhood who know who killed my child, who they hanging out with. No, justice, not revenge.
revenge. Where are we now? We're in deep trouble in the age of Obama in trying to talk about democracy, especially as it relates to race. Yeah, Brother Mike Dyson said Barack Obama's been running from race to where a black man runs from the police. <laughs> That's just graphic and provocative, but the point is he knows that if he's obsessed with the next election, it's the way independence and the moderates you speak to. As that prison industrial complex intensifies and the poverty intensifies, just last week, unemployment declined. Black unemployment increased. No reference to it whatsoever. Why? Doesn't help in the election. Well, you know what? We're not just concerned about the election. We want to know the truth and what you're doing about the truth and the suffering. And how are we going to come to terms with that suffering, given the fact that we got a right-wing Republican Party and a centrist right-wing Democratic Party, and who will speak for working people, middle-class folk who once thought they were middle-class, they were workers with a bourgeois identity. Once they lost their jobs, they become part of the new poor. That's where we are. That is the tradition that, for me, is worth living and dying for. You all have been very patient. I started with Socratic note, I'm going to end on a blue note. Because we really are talking about a blues-like situation. You know the great Ralph Ellison used to say the blues ain't nothing but an autobiographical chronicle of a personal catastrophe expressed lyrically.